Oh, I guess Manya would try to explain to him what happened if after um after you know that happens and the change is shown, so he doesn't freak out as much. Sorry, Abishu, I'm trying to find you. Where did you go? I do not know. I just have several versions of each map. So it's like trying to find which version you're on. So, oh, it's because you had moved onto the bridge. Okay. So you guys would um, arrive here at the uh, the Hatman's house. The servants would kind of lead the way. There's others that are arriving. You notice a, a portly man to the north who seems to be um, trying to work through um, his horse into a stable. Let me get the portrait for him. And um, as you guys are kind of approaching here, a, another woman would make her way to the front here. And, um, oh wait, this is not here. And she would say, uh, ah, are you the heroes that have answered the call, the call of San Suebo? We are. You may call me uh, Zhu Ming. I am the head of household here, responsible for all domestic concerns. I, um, if you don't mind leaving your weapons in the closet here, we will, I'll bring you to meet with the headman. I'll hang up my mace. Oh, this isn't a weapon. This is a friend. Look at my dagger. Don't you have a special dagger? I do. It's one of the it's one of the arms answering fragments that have been uh, awakened. Isn't that going to be problematic when we reforge the arm answering and you have to kill it? Probably, yeah. It, this this was not a good choice on Mayu's part. He just wants friends. Did I get um, hurt? <clears throat> you shouldn't be hurt. You can mark that and take that off. You guys have had enough chance to rest here. We've been traveling for weeks, haven't we? Yeah. So for randomized things like my uh, armor, I can just assume those have uh, uh, grown back fully? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Um, yeah, this is my friend. His name is Carlton. Um, he's not really a weapon. Since he's a friend, can he come in? I try and diplomacy my way to get, <laughs> get Carlton to help. Sure, you could try. I would look. Can, can he assist me? I mean, he's telepathic. Or it, I, um, I mean, unless it's going to speak up and talk, probably not. But if it does... I think he can. If it speaks up, that'll pretty much end the conversation. Well, I mean, he's still technically a attacker. Uh, yeah, I, I think he can. I don't have a character. Can you give me another character sheet at some point? So I can build sure. this dagger. Shard of answering. I'll just do diplomacy. And if you think he would be able to assist. I need to check his stats anyway. If you wanted me to do it as a duplicate of one of your sheets. No, just a just a blank one would be great. Okay. Okay, no, it can't actually talk up. It only has telepathy with me. So Okay. So no one People would just see Mayu talking to its 
Oh, maybe. No, I can make it talk to other people, actually. Since it is a creature, it would be in the collective. All right. So, um, Juming will, um, sort of look at you. She just says, ah, I see. You talk to your weapon also. Yeah, he's Many really nice. The... Hmm. Many in the East um, fondly remember their twins. Sorry, what? Could you repeat that? She says, many in the East fondly remember their twins. Wait, is he my twin? She says, you do not know. Have you never what? heard the expression sword sisters, blade brothers? Oh, no. We just found him after we, uh, after we, you, you know those martial master types, the ones that are really strong? And they're like, we can never be defeated. And we cheat when we try to get defeated. You know those types? She breaks out laughing here. And she uh, calms down after a moment, slowly nods her head. So we defeated one of him because he was keeping, keeping, cause I guess this Carlton is actually a twin of, I mean, who else, is, who else has one of the shards on him? I have one. Of uh, of Vespers over there, um, but he was he was trying to keep Carlton from us, and we really needed Carlton and all his other brothery people. So we defeated him, even after he tried to cheat because we cheated better. And yeah, that's how we got Carlton. Hmm. I see. Hmm. Well, it's nice to meet you, Carlton. She talks directly to the blade. Do you want to talk to him? No. I, I invite her to the collective so she can talk to him. She will um, just smile and sort of like say, it's not my place. And uh, she will refuse. <clears throat> Carlton lets out a booming disappointment. That those who are in the collective would be able to hear. All right. As um, you guys are kind of moving your way um, forward, and this larger man will approach. He'll sort of look up to welcome you, um, as though he's gonna hug you with his bare arms, and he says, "Ah, nice to meet you. My name is Ambassador Pa. I represent the state of Wild Rice and our interests in this endeavor. Who might you be?" You have the look of heroes about you. Is wild rice the jungle thing we were talking about? It is, yes. Interesting. Um, we're, we're friends of Sun Suevo, and we heard he was in trouble. And we made a deal because we're, we're also really good people, and he's good people. So now we're coming to see him. Hmm. Ah, well, his friends are my friends. I've never met him, but I hear he's a great man. Fine soldier. Yeah, he's really strong and big. Yeah, huh. he's almost as big as me. <laughs> man, that's a feat. He'll make his introduction to Zhu Ming. And Observing all the proper protocol, she'll do the same to him, and she'll say it. Um, I can lead you all together if you like. Uh, does she take Carlton, by the way? No, she would let you keep Carlton, as um, she understands that special relationship. If you guys want, you can roll a knowledge check to understand what she was talking about with the sword sister, blade brother thing. What kind of check? You could do knowledge history or religion, I think. But not nobility. Sorry, what'd you say? But not nobility. It's just the one I'm good at. Nobility could work too, actually. Um. Hey, like just FYI, when she says that, um, Abshu uh, sort of 
and takes the lens and the uh, crown into his uh, armor storage uh, to get them out of sight. Okay, sure. If you want to consider this like concealing an item, you could roll a sleight of hand check. No, he's not trying to hide that he's doing it. It's more of a show of courtesy. Sure. I mean, it's like bits of beholder armor that can't be a welcome sight. Yep, yep. All right. So then... Sorry, what are we rolling? Uh, to learn more what she was referring to with the sword sister blade brother thing. Uh, okay. My character sheet's not loading, so I just won't roll. It's fine. That's fine. Okay, so I wish you and Eredavar um, know the reference, especially with Eredavar being from the East. Um, this is fairly common knowledge, but um, he might know a little bit more depth about it. So, if you recall, in the intro adventure, when Empress Gwenevalea was making her decision about which road to take your people to found the new capital of the Empire, um, the sort of head of the Church of the Prima had said that they should go west, but definitely not east. So when they went east in the eastern dimension, they were thought to have been turning their back on the Prima. And this sort of started a process by which they uh, became less devout worshipers. And over time, they sort of lost the association with the church. Perhaps in retaliation for this, it was said that they were cursed such that the eldest born to each family would instead be born as twins. So this is only applies to noble families, but uh, it obviously creates a bit of a problem. Um, it's sort of like a built-in succession crisis for every generation. To address this, and according to some rumors, um, if both of the ch children are allowed to live, one of them will inevitably become evil. They started a practice whereby on their 18th birthday, the twins would face off against each other in a duel to the death. The loser would have their spirit imbued into a blade and would then be possessed by the victor. These blade brothers and sword sisters are carried by all noble, all those of noble birth in the East as sort of weapons indicating their uh, close connection to their family and as um, ties to their siblings. What happens to the weapon when they die, or is there just not enough time passed for that? So usually the weapon is buried with them upon their death. Um, sometimes the weapon is passed down through the generations, especially if it's a weapon of legendary quality. Um, but this practice began after the original arms of answering were forged. So none of the arms of answering are such a blade, is your understanding. But there are still many, sometimes quite ancient blades that are imbued with the spirits of um, these Easterners. And this uh, decision was like two or three hundred years ago, right? Yeah, that's right. That's fucking awful. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's an amazing curse. Yeah, I, I, I sort of want to... So, are the blades still sentient when they're buried? Sometimes they are, yes. Oh, gee, oh that's like my worst nightmare, being buried. It's like the curse of immortality. Oh, mm. God. So, um... Yeah, you guys are maybe thinking about this or, you know, reflecting uh, on this as does, you are. Does anyone share over. this with mine, you? Because that's going to have a big impact on what I do. Yeah, if I know it, I'll share yeah. it. Um, yeah, Abju will certainly relay what he knows and oh, that's not good. <laughs> to the rest of the party. Along with whatever main Hugh discusses with him, if anything. Hmm. Or sorry, uh, Eredavar. As always, I only reveal pertinent information and answer questions when I find out something. Um, so Manu is going to start... <sighs> Can I do a knowledge like Arcana or check? Oh! Hey, there he is. Peace, 11. 
Just learned that all Can everyone it. in the East is fucking terrible. Because they're fucking <laughs> sword soul people. God damn it. Everyone's terrible over there. So apparently the nobles are always the firstborn noble is always born as a twin, and they think that one of the twins will be evil. So they have the twins fight to the death at 18, and one of them gets their soul bound into a sword, if you're a noble family. And the other just carries around that sword. Doesn't make any fucking sense, because the evil one should just win by poisoning or something. But Question. If, hmm. if a person who's got a twin, and then they go, like, to another region and change forms, what happens? So they wouldn't have had that twin, so they wouldn't presumably have uh, that sword with them either. Um, also, this, that's such a golden opportunity for the spiritualist art to, uh, class. Hope you have at least one noble who just has the spirit of their twin haunting them, like, fuck you! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sometimes they're born as triplets or others, of course. Um, which makes things even more complicated, but yeah. So, so Manu is going to now, every time he sees a noble, try and invite their sword into the collective. And this is so fucking disrespectful, but... Oh, wait, no, I wanted to do uh, knowledge to see if the sword would be considered mechanically, if it would have a wisdom higher than one, I think. But, mm -hmm. um, like... Fluff wise, if it would be sentient and aware. Right. Just from the description. Uh, so this would probably be our count. I'm going to start peacocking. And that's at a plus four, so 32. Okay. Well, you have the impression that some certainly are, but probably not all. It probably depends on some combination of the desires of the sibling and the means of the family it could be for example that not all blades are sentient some are imbued with the soul but not the mind of the twin others you know have some other like degree of sentience be lower than what you'd expect from a normal person but all right um yeah all right and i think the the I'm I'm just making sure, but um, I think the bar for collective is sort of weird in that it's any creature with the wisdom. Uh, each target must have a wisdom score of at least one. Doesn't even specify creature. Right, right. Well, let's maybe address that later. All right, because that's a bit technical, and we're trying to. So, uh, Slevin, just to catch up real quick, we uh, have. Enter the East now. The party saw a transformation of the Western delegation uh, to change into their Eastern forms. They're still very much themselves. They just mostly look different and talk differently. And um, you've now been escorted to the Hetman's house, essentially the leader of this village. And um, you're going to have a meeting with him, it looks like. So you have been escorted from by this Xu Ming woman who claims to be the head of the Sun household um, their staff or sort of like the lady in waiting. And um, they've sort of asked you guys to come in and meet with the heaven and his family. And you are there, Slevin, since I haven't heard from you? Yep, I'm here. All right. I'll move everybody over there, just to, for simplicity. Right. Oh my god, All they right. have a bathtub here. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so as you enter, um, there's sort of like the headman gives you a formal greeting, bows, and says, welcome to our village. You may call me headman Jigu. This is my son, Jogu, or Joyu. We, uh... Mm -hmm. Hey, Lake, is that the guy in red? Yes, With the no guy label. in red would, would be his son. Do you not see his name? No. Yeah, he doesn't have no, a name. Just an icon. Neither does the prince. Oh, that's weird, because the... 
Name click the thingy. Here. I did click the thing. Lies. Uh, you mean the I Dwarven X Prince? Yeah, he doesn't have a name on my screen either. Yeah, he doesn't. Um, but uh, uh, Hetman Jigu does. Um, not relevant at the moment, but Lady Wu wasn't that the the woman who was involved with uh, Cebu in the vision we saw? Uh, yes, that's Cebu's son, Cebu's mom, and his sister is Sun Mukon. Didn't his mom like off his dad or suspiciously? Yes, Lady Wu is complicit in the murder of Shogun of the East, but she is has blamed Yuan Chu. And nice. Was this the information? Where did we get this? I from, from the, the vision, vision in the crystal place. It was the second vision. Gotcha. All right. But All right. the the Lady Wu being complicit, I think that Abshu like gathered that so i don't think that's public knowledge well it would be within the party yeah yeah huh Man, i should have asked i was thinking the name sounded familiar but i thought she was like i'm, I'm confusing her with somebody from the last campaign i think okay so um yeah, sorry, I'm, I don't know why the nameplates aren't showing up. They're all enabled for um, to be displayed publicly. So, oh wait, I will help. It could be that some of these tokens were created before they changed the system. But then nobody else has complained about this. So. The people in Calamir's party also didn't have their names displayed. Really? Yeah. That is disappointing as hell. No, it's well, I fixed twenty it. on a Friday. Yeah, now it just says Prince. <laughs> Big guy. Bad Big guy. guy. Oh, is that Vesper? <laughs> no, I I did it. I made everything better. No more. Yeah, this must be a, just a bug on the roll. Except 20. he's not a prince anymore. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he's just our buddy. Correct. He's the envoy now. Wait, how did he come in here? Is someone carrying him? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Abchu's just dragging in this no, usual. Oh, no. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, no. Now, now we, we see should. his name. The okay, prince so... formerly known as. Oh, yeah, I could see Alboin. Sorry, it looks like they. I have to enable you to see everything on their thing for you to see it. Yeah, I know that's a terrible the system they came up with. Used to be able to just check one box, but now you gotta go through and check everything. Yeah. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this for like every group now too. Okay, whatever. Um. So, but you can see the other ones here, like Shu Ming and. Uh, yeah, those are the only two I didn't see. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so they welcome you. The Hetman asks. He says, "Um, we were expecting a delegation from the West, but." not heroes. I'm told that you are um, responsible for many great deeds in from the north to the west and beyond. Tell me, um, who are you and why have you come? For the Council of the Horse, Horse Club. Club. <laughs> um. We're here to help a friend, I guess. Hmm. Oh, so humble. No need to be. I know that Sun Suebo made a call for heroes, and he mentioned something about some that might stop by. I'm happy to see that you've answered the call. We could use all the help we can get. Unfortunately, Sun Suebo could not be here to welcome you himself. He has had to take command in the city of Jianling. There he is keeping the bulk of his forces and uh, most of his commands. But um, I and my son are providing protection for the village and for his family. Um, Lady Wu and Sun Quan are also here. It is a great honor. 
How old is your son? Joe, you will step forward. He says, the same age as some suevo. Old is some suevo. How old is that? I believe. Sorry, did he answer? I think he did. Let me double check because I actually would know what the age here would be. Um, I could look up the actual age for you. By the way, if anyone wants to stop mine you before he asks what he's going to ask, any intervention will be allowed. <laughs> and I will stop. What are you going to ask? He's about to ask if you've killed your brother and turned him into a sword. It, 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 I would hope that by now people had enough of a grasp on him to be able to tell. Anyone wants to step in. So he's 25 as a Sunsebo. And they haven't done the duel of death yet? They did. Sunsebo defeated his twin, and Joyu defeated his. I was about to ask if anyone wants to stop him. I pinch Mainyu and shake my head oh. no. <laughs> oh, I thought you were suggesting that they were brothers. <laughs> They were not yeah. brothers, but they are sworn brothers. The Joyu and um, Sunswebo have uh, are about the same age, from the same region. They trust each other implicitly. All right, mine you, mine you stops. <laughs> um, but is Zoyu wearing a weapon? Um, so he would be here. Let's see his portrait. Um, some of these portraits were I actually had commissioned. This is one of them. I might change it, but. Also, holy shit. So if Sun Suevo has. God, that must be terrible to be Sun Suevo's sin, but then he dumps you for using an arm and answering instead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. This is just. I mean, why not wield both? Yeah. Dual wielding classes, and you're yeah. pretty much a badass with a combo like that. We have two hands. I, I think this might be actually, once you think about it, this might be worse than the abortion robots we made. And that's, that's saying okay. something. <laughs> so, okay. Um, um, later, follow up. <laughs> sure. So, um, Lord Alboon will also step forward and announce himself. He says, um, he explains that he's Lord Alboin of the Silver Star Clan. He's here as a representative of his people, come to help to defuse the situation here in the East. His understanding is that Yuan Shu has falsely proclaimed that he is um, the emperor, partially on the pretense of the title of High King. Ambassador Pa will also step forward and formally introduce himself, saying a bunch of what he said before, that he's here to represent the interests of the state of wild rice and um, to work towards collaboration and mutual benefit for their peoples. And he's human? He appears to be. Um, although you could look him up for more carefully if you want. You can make a perception check. Mind sight. All right. Oh, yeah, you do have mind sight. <laughs> uh, all right. So Aerodarver is um so serious. So the um so Aerodarver is looking at him pretty carefully here down. He looks to be kind of like a large human. Ambassador Paul will kind of go on to say that, you know, he's not from um, originally from the state of wild rice, um, but he's lived there for many years and um, gotten to know its peoples and he feels that he is a good representative for the outside world. Um, however, with Dranik, Dranik would be aware that he is actually a type outsider. And that his intelligence score is in the mid thirties. Hot damn, he's smarter than I am. Yeah, but you're a gnome. 
So this is definitely not the impression, however, that you're getting from this kind of bumbling of, um, this is probably rather alarming. I'll wait to tell the rest of the group when they're not being observed so closely. Sorry. Sorry, did you say that you were telling us or not? I'm not going to tell you quite yet. I'm going to tell you. I just don't want to tell you when there's like a bunch of people looking at us. And that is probably an extremely out. smart, smart decision. All right. So um, <clears throat> they continue. They say, um, uh, "The Joe Yu will speak up here." He says, uh, "My sworn brother." Sansuevo um, is calling for all heroes and all defenders of the Empress to come to his aid in opposition to the false emperor he wants to. I don't know what he's told you, but you should make your way to the city of Jianling um, first thing in the morning. Until then, you are welcome to rest here in our humble abode and um, clean yourselves eat, drink, and prepare yourselves for the battles ahead. Lake, do you have your mic really close to your mouth? No. Are you hearing me? No, it just sounds like you're sniffling or slurping soup every time you stop talking. I thought maybe it was just you inhaling against the mic. Mm. Sure, it's just like you you say what you're saying and then it's like <laughs> Huh. Maybe that's a uh setting of the um sensitivity for the mic could be i was just curious yeah i wasn't even hearing it but well it's gonna kill you now that you can hear it possibly i'm good at ignoring <laughs> stuff uh, i'm just with siblings okay how's this seems fine Send it like that. All right. So, um, if my words or sentences start getting cut off, let me know. So, um, yeah. Do you guys have any additional questions or comments for him and Jigu and his son Joyu, or do you just accept their offer of hospitality? And um... Abshu will just uh, introduce himself as a member of uh, King Dranic Circle and. Um, thank them for their hospitality. Mm. Right. I forgot you guys would have introduced King Dranic as well. I would have. I didn't know if you were going to go through formal introductions. Sorry. Yeah, there would have been a, a series of formal introductions here. Um, sorry, I forgot that. We just sort of barged into the room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was supposed to be that the... Um, you would have been announced at the door and then entered and then introduced yourself like a bit less formally then and then getting into the conversation but yeah i thought ming was leading us in and then she went into the garden i was like uh did i miss something well it was after she had led you in she would have walked out into the garden there to take care of some other chores and things okay well uh i will partake in the hospitality but uh i don't have anything uh extra to add to it we're just here at the call of uh sabo so unless there's something that needs to be discussed uh i'll take a bath and get ready for tomorrow all right um did any of my news invitations get responded to or rejected or even go through i suppose um probably i think it's probably reasonable that uh, at least one of the blades here would be sent in. All right, the one with who? God damn it, I need to turn this down. Let me turn. The, who's uh, one went through? We'll say it is the uh, the one on the table, probably the one that belongs to Jigu or is a family blade. All right, and although this it wouldn't come up right now, 
Um, would I know if like a target is invalid or if like well, I guess it would come up right now. Would I be able to tell if a sword was definitely did not have a wisdom score by doing this? Um, I would say not necessarily. It's not like a detect intelligence ability. It's just you know, do you want to join the collective or not? If they turn you down or if it's invalid, there's you probably can't tell. All right. Um, I'm debating whether I want to start forcing swords into the collective, but uh, Manu will also just make no mention that he's talking to the sword, but it's going to start talking to the sword that accepted. All right. Um, so, I'm oh, going. Oh, he's just going to open with, um, hi, Mr. Dead Bot, Dead Child. Uh, I'm mine you. I'm also a dead child, but you can't tell it when you look at me. And this is going to be where everyone else can hear. Who is in the collective, of course. Hmm. Sword will just respond. Uh, I was a child when I died. I have since grown. You could say... I have drawn blood in battle. Well, and that's that good. Reason I am a man. Um, so just wanted to know, are you happy? Are you doing okay? You're not in an endless loop of suffering as your body is conformed into a space where it does not belong. It becomes a sword of steel. You feel every time you look in the mirror, I'm not supposed to be a sword, but you are. Something like that. What is a body next to honor? What do I have for the pains of the living that I should take on, uh, that I could not defend the shame of my family or avenge the shames of my family? Okay. Um, is there anything you'd like me to do? Or tell somebody, or no, or... Joyu is a good man. I hope that one day he will reach his potential as a strategist, a commander. I would ask only that you help to keep him safe in future journeys. Sounds good. I can't make promises because, you know, you're a sword. But um, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to leave you in here for now, if that's okay. We might have other questions for you. Hmm. But, um, yeah, as long as you're, you're doing okay and, you know, you're fine with being a sword and all that. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. The, the sword will speak up as you are getting to end the connection, and it will just ask you directly. Does Sun Suebo trust you? Um, probably. I mean, we probably not completely, but once we go tell him, like, hey, yeah, we killed a god, you know, or a, a, a pseudo god, and we've been doing all this good stuff, and we're here to help, you know, I think so. And would you die for him? Um, can you define the question more? Would you make the ultimate sacrifice? Um, well, I'm, do you know what a paladin is? Perhaps by uh, another name. Yeah, it, I'd like serve a deity-ish person. She's sort of nice, but um, so I have this mission that I'm on, and if dying for him helps further the mission, then I would in an instant. But if it was a choice between, or if I could be assured that he would complete the mission upon my death, then yeah, if I can die, I'm not even sure I can. But um, but 
if it was just out of loyalty for him alone, um, I can't say for sure that I would until after my mission is over. And then we'll see where the road takes us then, you know. It's like, I got this big honor that I got to do before the little honors, little honor wins, you know. So you are wholly devoted to your quest. Yeah. I see. But if it helps, my quest is to stop everyone from dying. So, you know, Sun Suevo would probably die if everyone died. So. Sun Suevo is closer to dying than you may think. I mean, yeah, he's got the mom who fucking killed his dad, or freaking killed his dad over there. Like, can you believe that? Do you actually say that to the yeah. guys? Hmm. Blade can't talk to other people. He can't tell people that. It's not like we were just... All right, actually, no, I'm not going to say that. Because I mind you does, was just told that, yeah, the Blade can talk to people. Hmm. Mind you's going to say, yeah, I feel like... I get the feeling that that's probably the case for most of us, but what do you do? You have any specifics? Ask Joe Yu or Hetman Jigu. What uh, is the current status of Sun Suebo? Oh God! Gosh darn it! All right. Um. Well, um, as I said, I'm just going to leave you in the collective. You can leave if you want, but we might have other questions. Um, I will, you know, if your guy's a friend of ours, we'll be a friend of yours and all that and saving the world. Happy, happy. Maybe you can talk to, uh, maybe you can talk. I have a, a sword that's sort of like you, except he's not at all like you. So you can talk. Yes. This No, this is... This is public with everyone who can hear that. In fact, I think I would have like the king and stuff in my collective. Okay. So if the king is still in range and he would have accepted, then he would. I think I have like 800, 900 foot range right now. So if he'd be out of range, that's fine. But Okay. Well, he may have turned it off since it's kind of difficult to talk and listen to the collective at the same time. Uh, you just need a high enough score, and you're good. Um, but, it may yeah, just be it, that you're annoying. I don't know. Yeah. That's that's probably the more likely answer. All right. Um, yeah, everyone who is currently in the collective, so Abshu and Vesper, will be able to hear it. This, this is specifically public. So while you are discussing this, um, or talking to the Blade, Ambassador Pa has sort of spoken up. He's talking to Joe Yu and Jigu about, you know, what the state of wild rice could do for them. They have um, many provisions, uh, food and supplies that they could provide, um, even some medicinal supplies and others that could help the soldiers in the upcoming battles. They don't have troops exactly that they can push forward, but perhaps like trade relations could be established and, you know, a favorable um, exchange of goods and services. You know, as Ambassador Pa is kind of doing this whole spiel, the, um, Hetman and uh, his son listen intently, but um, they end up uh, not making any decisions here, and eventually they sort of wave him off, and he takes his leave. I'm going to ask Hetman Jigu, what's the state of Sun Sebo? His uh, eyebrow kind of shoots up. Joe Yu kind of looks at Jigu and back at you, and he speaks up ahead of his father. He says, how did you learn about that? He asked. He called us here. I think we deserve an answer. Hmm. This is not... I cannot answer this, or provide an answer that would leave this room. Do you understand? Yes. Hmm. Sansuevo, as you know, was originally working for the false emperor Yuan Shu in his conquest of the East. He served him loyally until 
until Yuan Xu took on the title of false emperor. And only then did he harbor any intention of rebelling. He continued to execute his will by conquering the Golden Scars and taking the city of Jianling. But before Sun Suibu could make his move, assassins were sent after him, presumably by the false emperor with the intent to end his life. The assassins failed to kill him outright. However, they did manage to deliver a deadly poison, which is slowly racking his body. My understanding is that the healers say he will survive and perhaps even be stronger for it. But until the poison has completely left his system, he must refrain from overexertion. Any excitement or adrenaline will trigger the poison again and bring him closer to death. Um, we did just have a bunch things. of people arrive, right? So do you think there's anyone, like, they, they, we, they're pretty cool people. Do you think there'd be anyone who'd be able to help them? Like, hmm. Jigo will speak up here. He says, we don't have much information on these assassins. We know that they were sent by Yuan Shu, but our best sources tell us that they believe they were from the state of wild rice. Mm. Poisons that they use are extremely virulent uh, or ex are extremely potent and uh, cannot be removed through traditional magics or means. Uh, our best healers are on the case and they say it is just a matter of time. Well, what if you made him faster? Just keep him constantly under the haste spell. That way, time goes fast. So you would sort of like raise an eyebrow like to Jigo, like, do you think that would work? Jigo <laughs> sort of shakes his head and looks to the rest of you, ignoring Mimi. Drag, save him, go. 